Thank you, Brother Neville. Good evening, friends. Back again. I never got the four hours in this morning. That's a shame. <laughs> and after speaking four hours, you ought to be so tired of me and run me out of the platform. <laughs> Someone said today that you're always you've got a bunch of these things left over that you never get to. Yes, but sir. tonight, honey, you can just have all the time that you want. Amen. 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 So you don't have to miss nothing. <laughs> well, I got about half the Bible wrote out here. <laughs> we got several precious brothers here. We want to hear them. How many enjoyed? The service this morning of the actually four hours. I don't know what that tape went to. <laughs> My sister called me up after the service and she said it must not have been to nobody else, that it must have been just to me. But I said to her husband, Junior, said, What'd you think? Oh, he said, I heard Brother Branham do better than that. She said, Then I was sure it all come to me. <laughs> she said, Amen. I believe she's back there. I would tell it on her, but I'll just let it go. <clears throat> Dolores, where you at? She isn't here? Well, I'll tell it then. <laughs> she said, I've been guilty using just a little bit of, uh, you know, makeup, cutting just a little bit, so that's <laughs> over. <laughs> she realized she wasn't dead yet, you see. <laughs> you got to die. So, um, title it, The Message of for the New Year's. May the Lord grant His blessing. So nice tonight to see so many in. Brother Grim Snelling had just got in in time to hear him closing out that old song, And We Shall Go to Dwell on Zion's Hill. I guess there's nobody in here ever remembers little Rabbi Lawson. Anybody remember? Yeah, two or three of you. Brother Grim, that, Brother Slaughter, that made me think of Brother Lawson. You remember how he used to sing? Little bitty fella, I called him Rabbi because he wore a little flat black hat. He was a Pentecostal preacher. But great big tarry shell glasses, and I said, you look just like a rabbi. And so we always called him Rabbi Lawson, a wonderful little brother. And he, <coughs> he's so old, he'd come stooping in, got run over by a car and stiffened up his knees. He'd hang his crutch or his squawking cane on this side here. And I'd sit down in the chair, and when he'd get over there to that part... The wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. He'd pick up that old cane, reach over his shoulder, and hook it right around my neck. Bring it right up like this. Put his arm around me and say, Then we shall go to dwell on Zion Hill. <laughs> Any, anybody else in here ever know Rabbi Lawson? <laughs> Just a few of you. I want to say this then. <clears throat> Strange thing happened to him. He was a real little preacher. Fine, brother. And he, he didn't have no big charges. That wasn't his mission, but I believe he lived true to what he was put in charge over. That's the main thing. Amen. And his wife <coughs> thought he wasn't making enough money preaching, so he wanted him to get a job. He studied the Bible all the time. So one day she got so angry with him, she just grabbed the Bible right out of his lap, tucked it over and raised up the stove and stuck it in the stove and burned it. A few months after that, she was putting up some Christmas lights. Fire the Christmas tree, caught her and burnt her up right in the same place. See? You reap what you sow. Amen. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. See? Thinking about the Word of God, them people that had the accident out there and then Satan tried to destroy their... I just see them raise up back there just then to let someone in. Their trailer. Practically everything in that room burnt to a crisp. I was out there. The only thing that existed... I think was a blessed old Bible. And I think my book and Brother Osborne's, everything was burnt to a crisp in their trailer. I picked up the Bible, it just smoked a little on the outside. I told the sister and brother that someday, the Lord willing, I'd like to take that from the pulpit here and preach on the text, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not. (laughs) When it's all gone, the word is still there. Isn't it wonderful how God cares for His Word? And then let that Word be in you. He'll take care of you. Amen. During the time of the flood, I was preaching here one night, left my Bible. The 37 flood came overnight almost and swept <coughs> through the tabernacle, picked up this same pulpit, 
raised it right up. There was no other ceiling in here then and set it right against the ceiling. The Word being under the pulpit, instead of it sinking, it floated. Tuck it right up to the ceiling and I rode all around over here in a boat. And then when the waters went down, it came down and was laying right here at the same chapter I was reading out of after the flood. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not. <laughs> right. He's wonderful, isn't he? Amen. Honestly, I, I want to get away from here real quick because we've got so many fine ministers. I thought I'd call them all to the platform, but we haven't got seats for them because I've seen several since I've come here uh, in the audience that <clears throat> perhaps has a message tonight. We want to hear from our pastor from different ones, the, the message they have on their hearts for tonight. Now, I'll just be real brief and try to say a little something, and then we're starting something tonight, or something happening tonight, if God willing, that we have never did since I've, in my lifetime. Just thought of it the other day, called Brother Neville, and he thought it was a grand idea. Amen. Instead of all the commotion of blowing whistles and hollering and carrying on and drinking and the New Year's crowding and so forth like that, we're going to come to the altar and take communion. At the midnight. Uh, with, and each one of us, as we listen to the words tonight from these different ministers, let us be real reverent. Now, last Sunday night, I gave a Christmas message and that I said to the church, to the people from Georgia and different places, don't come because it would knock their children out of Christmas. They're, they look for it. They're just children. <clears throat> and I would get the tapes for you. Now, you that didn't get to come... Uh, the tapes at my expense. Just let Brother Woods and them know, and I'll I'll take care of it for you, and uh, get the tape. And now um, tonight, I just want to first <clears throat> say this one thing before I read my text. And probably in preaching, we'll be right up almost to midnight. And then we're going to about fifteen twenty minutes before twelve. We're coming out. And bring the kosher out at the Lord's Supper, the Paschal Lamb, and set it out here, the kosher, and then give thanks to God and stand at the altar with bowed heads and hearts and take the communion of the Lord. Now, I think the room is full of recorders in there and so forth. I don't know whether we're... Well, I say they'll be out by that time, so we won't have to admit feet washing too. And <clears throat> tomorrow is Monday and... Some of the people from out of town have plenty of time to go home and trusting that God will bless you now. And this will probably be the last time I'll get to be with you until I come back from out west. I'm going out to Arizona, perhaps going to Louisiana first, then on to Arizona and uh, California. And then as soon as I uh, get back, I hope to be with you again. Until that time, pray. I never made any itinerary. I believe I see Brother Borders tonight in the meeting. I called attention for him this morning. And um, he keeps a record. And he presented a book to me the other day of all kinds of invitations. But somehow during this time, the Holy Spirit said to me, Go one place, and when you're finished there, I'll tell you where to go from there. See, just lead right on, like that, what to do next. So we must be pretty close to the line when he starts doing that. See, just know wherever somebody is calling and waiting. Not for New Year's resolution, because we don't make them. Don't do no good, you break them. I see my daddy throw that plug of tobacco away every New Year's night. To watch where he throw it so he could get it the next day. And that's about the way it goes. Let's not make resolutions. Let's ask for mercy and grace. Ask for God's mercy. And if I don't get a chance anymore to the giving of the communion, probably in a hurry at that time, I, this is one thing I desire to do. One of my desires is to see a church without spot or without wrinkle. That the Holy Spirit, Brother Grimm, this has been the longing of my heart, to see a church that's so filled with God until sin can't abide in it anywhere. The Spirit of God calling it right out, wherever it is. I want to see that. And one thing that I desire, the one great vision from the Lord that I've always desired to have from the Lord, He gave it to me the other morning, about 10 o'clock in the morning, and that satisfied my desire. For years and years since I've been a minister, I've longed to see that, and it finally come to pass. 
Amen. And I'm very grateful to God. I haven't said nothing about it. Just got it wrote down. And I know it's just exactly what I've been asking for all the time. And now, I pray and trust to God. And tonight, anew, I dedicate my life to Him or His pulpit. That one great desire in my life is to be more humble before God and before His people. Knowing that that's one of my major mistakes is having to deal with the public in such a way it's took a lot out of me that used to be there. I trust that God will restore again that joy that I once had, not as I lost my joy, no, but I mean I want more of it. More, more humility to serve the Lord. This coming year, I promise God, if you'll let me live and give me health and strength, I will try to be a servant to God and a brother to man with all my heart. God bless you now. Let us bow our heads just a moment. As the world, Father, rocks around the equator, as we are told, now it will start again now, moving back towards from the shortest day of the year to the longest. Just a short time and the whistles will be blowing, the people will be screaming, the bells will be ringing, and the old year is gone, and a new year comes on. Father... We thank Thee that Thou hast let us see this year of 1961. And we pray You forgive us for all of our sins that we committed through this year. And if there has been one thing that we have did that has been good, Thy name be praised. For it was not us, the unworthy, but it was Thee, the Holy Spirit, that finally pushed its way into our life over our rebellion condition and did something that magnified God. We are grateful that He did it. Father, we had prayed tonight that He would press us aside every time and let the will of God be done in our lives. And tonight, as our sister churches, their pastors are sitting here, our brother Graham and brethren from different parts, of the country, Utica, Sellersburg, Georgetown, wherever it may be, precious souls as gathered together from many even states tonight to help us in this great jubilee here that we are celebrating and have turned the time to the singing of songs, praying of prayer, and of listening to the Word of God. Fill every heart, move back every doubt, take away every fear, Take away all weary and let the Holy Spirit move into our hearts and plant the Word. Let us be the field that the Word will fall in that will bring forth fruits in the coming year. Grant it, Lord. Help me now as it's my time. The lot falls to me at this time to speak. I pray that you will anoint the words that is said and may they go out under the anointing of the Holy Spirit with expectations, Lord, to bringing people that doesn't know you to you and those that are there, may they have more faith to serve thee. Grant it, Lord, and help my voice. And having a bad cold and being tired from a four-hour message this morning, I pray that you'll help me. Help all of us in the conditions now for the coming service and the communion. Bless this church and its pastor, our brother Neville, its trustees and its deacons. And may they serve more gallant this year than any time before. Thank you for their service and their gallantry, how they stood by me when I needed someone to stand by me. Brother Neville and Brother Roy Roberson and all the precious brethren who stood by us in the times of trouble and and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, made decisions in the best that they know how. And the decisions that they have made has been proven to be in your will, for you have blessed their decisions. 
God continue to be with them. Help us all together now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, <clears throat> to you who take texts and trusting that you'll be praying for me, and for a few moments I'd like to call your attention to a portion of Scripture found in the book of Judges. At the sixth chapter, beginning at the seventh verse, I would that you would listen quietly and listen to the Word. Can you hear me in the back, all right? Raise up your hands if you can. Fine. And if they watch, every who engineers this microphone will watch that it carries on. Is the tapes coming in? Judges, the sixth chapter, the seventh verse. Now listen close because I'm going to refer to this in a few moments. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt, brought you forth out of the house of bondage, I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of all that oppressed you, drew them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which is an arbor, pertaineth unto Josh, the Bezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianite. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us, and where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? If it be so pleasing to God, I wish to take a text there upon, I believe, the, about the 14th verse, where it said, If God be with us, then where is all the miracles? Now, we are all acquainted with the judges of Israel and how that they had done the Israelites, the Philistines, the Midianites, the Amorites, and all the different ones had come in like locusts and just eat up what they had and take it out and go on. But did you notice they could not do that until Israel first fell away from God? Amen. The devil can't set a foot on you to hurt you until first you get away from God. You must first remember that. Check when anything happens. See if you're in the faith or not. See that if you're right up to place with God, then remember the devil can do you no harm. You're in Christ. And this place here, we just left the, a few years before this, had been the prophetess Deborah and Bart, and how that she had prophesied and told them what to do and it was just exactly right. Barak, the great warrior, 
and how that they made a song of the triumph over the enemy. But as soon as they got out of the twist, right straight back into the rut they went again. If that isn't the picture of the church today, just as soon as it gets out of one twist right into another and it goes. But time had come for action. And that's the same now. The time has come for action. The time had come when playing church had come to a halt with God. There's no more playing church. We must get down to business. And I trust that that same God will place us upon the heart of the people tonight that it's time for a halt of playing church, playing religious. Playing righteous. And now it's time for action. As I was speaking this morning up on the subject of what the new birth was and how we come to it, surely that still sinks in your heart. Now the time has come to act upon what you know to be the truth. Amen. You cannot act with faith until <laughs> first you know what you're doing. You've got to first know what you are doing before you can have faith to do it. Someone said to me one time, a noted doctor was talking about a miracle that had happened among a sick person. And he said to me, Preacher, don't you believe if you told them people to go out and touch a tree or a post, the same thing would take place? I said, No, sir. I said, Because... You cannot have faith in touching a tree or a post. Faith is not that loose. It's got to be based upon some noted fact. Amen. You've got to know something about what you are having faith in before you can have faith in it. So we first must know how and what. What God's desire is what God's plan is, and how to approach God by that plan, and then we can walk up boldly to the throne of grace and plead what the plan is promised us. Now, they had been playing church. Just as soon as they got out of one twist, God delivered them. Then instead of really going on and serving God, seeing His mighty hand, they twisted right back out into the things of the world again. And so the time had come when God called a halt. And it must be that way. And I think it's time to call a halt now. Amen. We have twisted the Word of God to fit every organization there is in the world. Every plan that every man has schemed to do. We twisted a word to make it this way, and twisted a word to make it that way, and twisted it some other way to make it to fit a plan. But the time has come to halt. Amen. Stop your playing, church. Yes. Amen. The time has come when people says, "If you can just get enough spirit to dance in the spirit, if you can get enough to see lights before your eyes, or a sensation to run down your back, or some quiver, some shake, some emotion, you got it." You've got something. But I wouldn't say just what you had till I seen what kind of fruit it grew. As we went through it this morning, you can't expect a baby to be born a man. It's got to grow to it. And we grow in Christ to the full statue. Amen. Something not somebody get converted tonight and tomorrow go to preach the gospel. We grow up into manhood. Into the statue of Christ. Now, we find that when God's people gets in trouble, God always sends them a prophet with the true word to bring them out. It's never a time that God's people ever gets in trouble unless God sends them 
His Word and His Word, as we had this morning, come to the prophets. Amen. And how you test it is to find out whether it is according to the Word. If it's according to the Word, then God's Word becomes alive. Now, many might say, this is the prophet of our church. This is the prophet of our church. And two of them contrary one to the other. Something's got to be wrong. We all must speak the same thing. Then we must speak not contrary, but exactly with this word. That's how a true prophet is tested. Whether he's got the word. The Bible said if their testimony is not according to the law and prophets, there's no light in them. It's got to be according to the word. And God always, in every case, sends the people a true servant, a true prophet, that will bring the true word of God, and the word of God is what delivers the people. Always. Now, if we'd go back and read the 7th to the 10th verse, we find out in there, in this uh, 7th to the 10th verse, that Israel had turned away from God and had gone back into the world again and there came out of nowhere don't even give his name I don't guess the prophet was interested in his name he was interested in one thing God had anointed him Amen. he didn't make any difference whether he was classed a of uh, one of the denominations or something else, whether he was a bishop or an archbishop, the only thing that he was interested in was that message on his heart. And he called the people back to repentance and an understanding that their God was a God of might and a God of deliverance. God of miracles. That snatched them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Amen. Opened up the Red Sea and fed them in the wilderness. Amen. And a God of might who could take the land from someone else and give it to them. Amen. Hey, Praise God. As a true prophet. Amen. He was anointed. And he was the voice of God to them people. He spoke that it must be so. Because they were in trouble. These Midianites and Amorites and so forth that all come over and eat up all their land. And so the enemy had challenged and he must be met. Amen. Their armies couldn't do it. And their priests couldn't do it. And their churches couldn't do it. So it took the Word of God to meet His challenge. Amen. The enemy speaks today. The enemy tries to say that the days of miracles is past. That there is no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is only emotion. It's only a workup. So the enemy has challenged. And his challenge must be met. The only way we can meet the challenge of the day when the denominations call the people away and, and put them in this organization, that organization, let them, women, cut their hair and wear makeup and men of all kinds of lives live as trustees and deacons and pastors in the church because they got some PhD or LLD is a requirement. Jesus never did require a man to have that. Amen. Jesus' requirement was Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Then you are a witness to me. That meets his challenge. That met the enemy's challenge. That met it in that day. It'll meet it in this day. Now, I want you to notice in 7 to 10, we see the prophet coming. From 1 to 7, we see the people falling away. And from 7 to 10, we see the prophet coming and giving the people the remedy. Notice, we don't know where he come from. He never said there was a man of the 
a Pharisee who had been a priest for a while and never give his backgrounds, them prophets, they rise up from nowhere. Look at Elijah. Elijah was the last and the sixth of the great prophets, of the mighty prophets. What we know about his background is nothing. We don't know what school he went to. We don't know what kind of a family he was out of. The only thing we know that God was with him. Amen. And he come forth and he left just about as mysterious as he come forth. Amen. He come out of the wilderness from nowhere Amen. and went back in the wilderness and caught up in a chariot of wind and tuck up into the heavens of fire. Amen. He come mysteriously and he left mysteriously. He had no theological backgrounds. We don't know where he come from, who his father was, who his mother was, who his brothers and sisters was. The only thing we know, he was a man of God. God take him out of nowhere and used him and tuck him back into somewhere. In his presence. He was a man of God. And here comes a prophet out for that hour. And gave him the word of the Lord. Remember, he never gave him some man-made theology. He said, I am the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. Show my mighty hand. Show my power. I imagine Gideon was sitting out there listening at him. I am the God that did these things. And I've done all this for you, and yet you've not obeyed my commandments. And all this you have not done. I want you to notice another thing that might encourage you. Immediately after that prophet's message, the Lord appeared on the scene. Uh, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As soon as he gave his message, the Lord appeared under a tree. The Lord came after the message of the prophet. Hallelujah. Lord. Sitting under a tree. The prophet gave, the people fell away, got off in their isms. God sent his prophet. As soon as the prophet got through with his message, the Lord followed the prophet's message. Amen. For deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we are living in a grand time. Amen. Amen. Immediately when the prophet went off the scene, what happened? The Lord came on the scene. Amen. As soon as John went off the scene, the Lord came on the scene. Very strange how God works, but He does it. Works in mysterious way. We read the scripture here where Gideon, scared out by the wine press, thrashing out enough wheat before the Philistines or the Midianites found him, him and his daddy, out there getting a little grub for their uh, winter's food, thrashing it out secretly so they couldn't find him. Because they just come in like grasshoppers and took all they had. That's the way the devil does. We get a little church started, everything going fine. How many preachers don't know this to be the truth? Just about time everything's going along fine, some old imposter will come right amongst that group and tear it to pieces. Right. Snatch the church right from a man if he can do it. See? That's the devil. Come in like grasshoppers and take out what's been given. Now, when Gideon certainly was a scriptural man, when the angel of the Lord said to him, and if you notice, it wasn't the angel of the Lord. Here it said, and the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. It was not an angel, it was God. It was a, a theophany in a man in the form of God, like appeared to Abraham, back in the wilderness and looked like a man so therefore being a messenger he was the angel of the Lord. And he appeared to him. And he said, Thou mighty man of valor. Said, He's going to take him and deliver Israel by him. And Gideon asked that question. What a scriptural man that was. That's the kind of man that God comes to. Somebody who knows Gideon said, if God is with us, if you are the messenger, 
Then where is the miracles that the prophet told us about? Hallelujah. He knew every word God went. His miracles followed him. Amen. He knew that wherever God would be, miracles would be there. Amen. And how can you expect God today to work in among people who doesn't even believe in miracles? Amen. How can it be? And he called in the mighty man of Viler, said, Now, by this you're going to deliver Israel. Now, that looked like a man sitting there. And it was a man. And he looked at him. And he said, Nay, my Lord, if God is with us, then why is all this trouble upon us? And where is the miracles that we're told about? Where is the things that God used to do? Now, there's a good way to trust whether the messenger is right or not. Amen. If he has a form of godliness, he will deny that power to do those miracles. Amen. If he's a messenger from God, he'll not only speak of it, but he'll have it Amen. to produce it and to show that the God that he talks about is with him in him. He said, if God was for us, where is all of his Mighty miracles. Because we understand. Look at how scriptural Gideon was. And otherwise, he said, if we understand that God is a great God of mighty workings. Amen. He's a great God of miracles. And if He is for us, and if He is with us, and He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, where can I see His miracles? Where can I see this God in action? Amen. Where's He at? If He's for us. The mighty man of valor could refer back to the old word and know it's right because he knows this, that God is a supernatural being. And wherever a supernatural being is, he'll do supernatural signs because the supernatural is in him. You just can't get out of it. How can you stand in the face of wind without having wind blowing? How can you get in water without being wet? Water's wet. That's the chemical of it. It's wet. And when you get in water, you're going to get wet. Right. And when you get in the presence of God, the supernatural, there's going to be supernatural signs and supernatural workings of a supernatural God. Therefore, he said, where is the working? Where is the miracles? If God be with us. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. See, where God is, miracles are. Where God is, the sign of God is there. And Gideon, very scriptural, said, where is these things? In other words, like this. I am a man maybe a 50 years old, he'd say. And I've heard him talk about a God that worked miracles. And I've went to church and I've believed the priests and I've believed the prophets. And I've believed the written word, all the scrolls. And I read in the scrolls where God, when He come among His people, something taking place. Amen. And Gideon didn't know but what there was a man sitting there under this oak tree. Amen. That's all he knowed. He was a man. He said, now, if God is with us, where is His miracles at? We want to see them. How scriptural that is. For where the supernatural is, God and His sign would be with Him. Where God is, the sign of God is with God. We know that. If He's in His people, they will do His signs. Just exactly. That was a question that Gideon had. <coughs> Where is God? If there is a God, if there is God with us, then let me see where His sign is. We told that He does perform them. And if this great task lays before me, maybe the old man standing there and he looked like an old man. The Bible said he had a staff in his hand. Read on the sixth chapter when you go home or tomorrow sometime. He had a staff in his hand. 
An old man looked like sitting under a tree. And he called him the mighty man of Viler. And he said that God was going to do this thing. And he said, God is with you. He said, then where is his miracles? If the supernatural God is here, where is the supernatural works of God? That could be easily said tonight amongst our churches. Where is that God that once lived? Did he die? Yes. Is he gone? Is he pursuing? Is he off on a trip? No, sir. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And if we say we are of God, then let's see where God is. Let's see the signs of God. If this tabernacle stands for God, let's see God moving among them. Yeah, let's see souls being born to the kingdom. Yeah, let's see lives be straightened up. Let's see the sick and the blind, the deaf. Let's see His mighty works being performed. God in our midst. If God be for us, where is His miracles at? He asks a question. Now, if God is with His people and in His people, He cannot, that person cannot help but do the same thing that God did. Because it's not the person anymore, it's God in the man. Amen. If that man sins, then God's not in there. Amen. If he loves the world, then God's not in there. Amen. And we know that God has no dealings with sin. Now, i give you a scripture for this just in a moment. Jesus, when he was on earth, he was asked the same question. They wanted to know, you being a man and make yourself God. When he healed a man with a palsy, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. He said, now, wait a minute. You being a man and forgive sins? He said that you might know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Or to heal, which is the easier. Take up your bed and walk or, or say, thy sins be forgiven you. And then he spoke to the man and he got up and walked away. And the Pharisees questioned him. And Jesus said, If you don't believe me, believe the signs that I do. Amen. See, they were told that there'd be a prophet like Moses raised up. And he would be the Messiah. And he said, If I do not do the works of my father, then don't believe me. I'm wrong. But if I do the works of my Father and you don't believe me, then believe the works. Amen. What does the works do? They tell you who I am. Amen. They testify of me. They're my witness. Amen. Not my credentials. I belong to the Presbyterian Church or the Pentecostal. I can show my fellowship card. But the works that I do, Amen. the signs of God, the signs of the Messiah. They're the one to testify of me. Jesus said in St. John 14, 12. If you just want to put the scripture down. St. John 14, 12. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Amen. 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 What is it, brother? If God be for us, where is his miracles? If God be in us, what's the matter with the thing? Something wrong somewhere. Yes. Jesus said, If you can't believe me what I say, watch what testifies for me. For they're the one that gives witness on me. The Lord your God said, There be a prophet rise up like Moses. And whosoever shall not hear this prophet will be cut off from amongst the people. The Messiah was to have a sign following him. And if that sign of the Messiah don't follow me, said Jesus, in so many words, then don't believe me. But if the Messiah sign testifies of me, then believe the sign. Because if you think I'm wrong, the sign is right. Because it's scriptural. Hallelujah. That's where Gideon wanted to get to. Amen. That's where Gideon was standing. Oh, if there be a God that's with us, we want to see the sign that He is a God. That He is the same God because He'll do the same signs. What did God do? 
Gideon said, wait, now I'll go get some, uh, an offering. And he went out and killed a cow or a lamb. And he boiled it. He brought bread. And he brought the lamb and set it down. The angel said, I'll wait here. Prove all things. Test it by the Word. Amen. And he said, I'll wait here, maybe two or three hours. Gideon had come with the broth and with the bread and with the meat. And the angel said, Now you'll understand by this. Hallelujah. This will prove it. He poured the broth out upon the ground for a drink offering. And he took the bread and the meat and laid it on a rock where he was thrashing at it. And took the stick from his hand like an old man of staff and touched it. And when he touched it, the smoke went out and the sacrifice was consumed. What was it? He took him back to the Scripture to prove what he was. Same God that's with Elijah on Mount Carmel. Same one I talked to this morning when you lay your soul upon his brass altar of judgment. What takes place? If he's the same God, he'll take the sacrifice. You've offered in sincerity upon his altar, he'll consume that sacrifice and the world will be gone out of you. Just a smoke will fall away. The sacrifice will be gone. Yes. If you be God and you're the God of the Bible that our fathers tell that perform miracles, let me see you perform a miracle or let me see some sort of a miracle that I know that God has met with me. Now, may I say this? If God still remains God, if God is the same God He was in the days gone by, you don't have to go up and shake hands with the preacher. You don't have to go up and put your name on a book. Then things are all right. Nothing against it. Then you go back and become a church member with your name on a book and they give you a letter and you pack it as soon as something goes wrong there. You blow up like I don't know what. And you take it over to the next church. And as soon as something goes wrong over there, then you take it to the next church. You see, you haven't done right in the first place. If God remains God, lay your sinful soul on His altar and He'll touch it with His Word and His power. And the world will be gone from you. And then you'll be a new creature. If He remains God. He was God of the Old Testament. He was God of the New Testament. He's the same God today. Yesterday, today, and forever. And you know then, down in your heart, that a supernatural work has been done by a supernatural being. When you once drank and smoked and lied, and you women loved the world so much, you kept wearing your makeup and your long, or short hair and doing the other things you did, and you find out that something happens that all the devils in hell could make you do it again. Something happened. A God of miracles performed. What did He do? Change your vile heart. Change your desires. Change your nature. A supernatural word by a supernatural God. Made a creature of time to a creature of eternity. Amen. Took the world out of you and put Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you're filled with His Spirit. Ready to meet God be God, where's His miracles? If God's with us, where is His miracles? If God is with the Methodist church, why is all the women still wearing bobbed hair? If God is with the Baptist church, then why does the pastor still smoke cigarettes? Many of them. Why do they still deny the power of, the, of God to heal the sick and to raise the dead and to speak in tongues and interpretate tongues and gifts of prophecy? Why do they still deny? If the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament Amen. is still the same God. Amen. If the God of the New Testament, the Holy Ghost, is still the God the Pentecostals claim, why don't they break down their walls of petition and fuss at one another and become born-again Christians? Amen. Sure. No, one won't even speak to the other one. See, the sacrifice hasn't been consumed. They go through sensations. 
They've done that all, their, all through the ages. Under idols, they've done sensations. But the God of the, of the Bible, that's the God same yesterday and forever, burns up the world and all the difference. Yes. Makes us new creatures in Christ. Yes. Jesus said, These testify and tell you who I am. The thing of it is, the reason we got all these things is because we still let denominational differences, creeds, fusses, popularity, and devils of the world blind us from the real truth of God. Right. Many person has been deceived in receiving the Holy Ghost. As I said, they've got doctrines today like Elijah's garments and, and um, all these other things, manifested sons of God and all these different isms and so forth in the world today. People fall blindly on there and go through some kind of a sensation, raise back up with an arrogant spirit, indifferent, fussy, high-tempered. That's not the Spirit of God. Still continue right on. Out of order. Don't know what church order is. Don't know how to behave themselves in the house of God. Amen. No manners. No dis, no audacity at all. No no feelings towards God. All they think about is my church. It shows they receive the church spirit and not the Spirit of God because it knocks all that out of you. Amen. Burns it up. Sure. See, they say, where is he? That's what we got a right to. But look, if the clouds are hanging over the sun, the sun is always shining. Amen. The only thing that keeps it from shining on you is clouds. Amen. And if you get rid of the clouds, the sun will be shining. The Lord, Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, get away from all of our sin and our doubts and our frustrations. The sun's been shining since the day of Pentecost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is just as great today as it ever was. But our denominations have smothered over the Word of God and saying it's for some other day. Oh, that oh, divine healing will be in the millennium. Our divine healing was back there isn't pertaining to the day. How can He be the same yesterday, today, and forever and still divine healing gone? How can the power, how can the Bible set in order First, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. For a vindication that the gospel still lives. God sends them right among us and we turn our back on it. God doesn't fail. It's the people's faith. Where is the miracles that are among us? Where are they at? God was talking to this man, getting him ready to go out. Move the clouds out. The sun's always shining. That's right. When doubts are gone and things are made right, miracles will be there. Amen. Just as sure as the sun's there, the sun, by the command of God, shines every day. It's there because God commanded it there. And as long as there is day and night, the sun will hang there. Sure, not all the time you see it. Because clouds has it covered up. Fog, clouds low or high, covers it up. But it's always there. See, and the only thing you want to do to see miracles, today if you want to see the miracle of God, just move all your doubt away. Move all your creeds away. Move all your denominations away. And there the sun's automatically shining. It's a commandment of God. Amen. For it said, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So as long as He's to be there forever, He's there. Amen. No question about it. He's there. Where is the miracles? What's hindering the miracles? God sent Christ. Christ is alive forevermore. Amen. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in their midst. Amen. 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 Oh, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. There He is. His promise. What's the matter then? We've let the clouds of doubt, greed, temper, selfishness, denominations, and other things break in on us. Uh, Break in and take us away from the Word. Say them as somewhere else. Denying Christ. Denying the baptism of of the Lord, of the Holy Ghost. Denying the Christian baptism of the name of Jesus Christ. 
other things, all kinds of things that our creeds has broke us away from the Bible. But in a, isn't it a strange thing, a miracle, that in the face of all of it, Brother Wayne, in the face of all the denominations, in the face of all the critics, the Bible still remains the same. Amen. How did it ever weather the storm? God is determined to judge every man by the Bible. Amen. And the Bible is the Word, and the Word is Christ. Amen. Everyone, every man will be judged by that. Take the clouds away, then what happens? The sun's right there. The only thing you have to do today is say, not, oh, Jesus, come and heal me. Oh, Jesus, give me the Holy Ghost. Just take the clouds away. Amen. He's already there. He come 1,900 years ago. Amen. And He's still there. And He'll always be there. I'm alive forevermore. The same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. Now, Gideon and those people there, before they could see or could uh, ever go see these miracles of God, there was a condition that had to be met to meet, to see the power of miracles. They had to believe. They also had to believe and obey the prophet's word to see the miracles of God. Now remember, before that they could see the miracles, they had to obey what the prophet said. Hallelujah. And before we can see the miracles of God, we've got to obey what the prophet said. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible is the prophet to us. Amen. That's right. If a man, no matter how much he calls himself God's prophet, uh, the Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, whatever he may be, whatever he calls himself, if this word isn't living in him, he isn't a prophet. Amen. He might be a prophet, but a false one. Yes. True prophets speak of this true word. Amen. Amen. It puts God just exactly the same God, the same power, the same words, the same everything. Amen. The true word. Now, they had to believe. They had to believe the prophet's word and obey it before they could see God's miracles. And today, you can't go here under false makeup saying that Jesus is not the same yesterday and forever. The days of miracles is past and there is no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost and expect to see God's miracles. Amen. You've got to obey it. Amen. And when you obey it, God takes care of the rest. Amen. If you could brush all the clouds back, the sun's already there. Amen. It just hangs there. The sun doesn't move, we're told. The sun remains in the same place. And Christ remains. Amen. That's right. We move away from Him, but He remains. Amen. That's right. The only thing you have to do is turn yourself back around and face Him once. Amen. And you see what takes place. Face Christ. Not face the church. Not face the creed. Not face the titles. Face the Christ. Amen. Not face the seminary. Face the Word. Amen. Christ is the Word. Sure it is. That's exactly. We'll obey the Word. To us, they had to obey the Word. And to us, we've got to obey the Word. If you'd like to know that, I've got a scripture wrote here. It said, If ye abide in me and my words in you, that's what you will. <laughs> hey? What was it? If God's Word is in us and abides in there, it just speaks for itself. Ask what you will, and it will be given to you. Now, that's found in John 15, 7, if you want to mark it down. See, Jesus said, If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. Amen. Not today one thing, tomorrow, next day something else, and backslidden over here, and down here, and down there. It shows you never got nothing to begin with. Amen. Oh, you say, I spoke in tongues. Fine. But you still you never got nothing. Okay? You say, I danced in the Spirit. All right. But still, I don't know what kind of spirit you danced in. Okay? If you're one thing one day and the next week another thing else, the next little pecker wood comes along, pecks on a hollow tree, you run after it, and the next one over here in Mission Trotting, don't know where you do belong, Amen. then Christ don't abide in you. His words isn't there because it's stable. Amen. You never turn to darkness. As I preached the other day on a paradox, when Joshua stopped the sun, Becky back there said, Daddy, he couldn't stop the sun. Said the world would stop. He stopped the world. I said he stopped the sun. 
God don't make any mistakes in His mind. I said, how could He stop the sun? The sun don't even run. The sun stands still. I said, but that, that missile out there wasn't what He's talking about. This sun that was traveling and making a light across the earth, that's the sun He stopped. I don't know what God did to bring it to pass, but He stopped the sun. The sun was going this way. The sun on the earth, the reflection of the sun. That missile out there, we could not see in a million miles of it. Or millions of miles. But the reflection of the sun that was traveling across the earth from day to night, that's what Joshua commanded to stand still and it stopped. Amen. 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 A paradox is something that's unbelievable yet true. So that's unbelievable yet true. Amen. How can God take a sinner, arrogant, hot-tempered, fussy man and make a saint of God out of him? How can He take a woman that's so low to the dogs, wouldn't even turn to her on the street and make a saint of God out of her? I can't tell you. But He did it! Amen. It's a paradox. Sure is. All God's great works are paradox. If ye abide in me and my word in you, ask what you will, and it'll be done unto you. St. John 14. Or St. John 15. Pardon me. St. John 15, 7. All right. Back to Genesis just for a moment. Noah had to meet the conditions. Noah had to believe God's word and act upon it before he could see God's miracle. Amen. That's right. Noah, the great prophet of Genesis, had to believe God's Word and act upon it before he seen God's miracle. It had never rained, you know. Never had been no rain. And what do you think they tell us that that age was a greater age than we live in now? In science, we cannot build a pyramid again. Or the Sphinx. We do not have the ways of making a mummy. We can't make it petrify like that. We cannot put colored in cloth to last like they did back there. We don't even have those things. And that's something our modern science can't even find. But they had it. We don't have, we don't have engineers like they had. That great pyramid in Egypt is so perfect in the center of the earth, no matter where the sun is, there's never a shadow around it. We couldn't put up a structure like that. We don't know how to do it. Neither could we build a pyramid. And up in there, up around the capstones and in there, laying almost a half a city block high in the air, there's stones that weigh billions of tons. Hundreds of tons, rather. Hanging up in there, all the machines we got in the world couldn't lift them up there. They tell me it'll take 16 flat cars to load the leg of the Sphinx on them. How'd they get it in there? How did it happen? They were smart. Scientists. What do you think they said to a man, a fanatic, supposed to be a prophet, that said there's water coming out of the skies? I could hear them say, we take our instruments and shoot plumb into the stars. And there's not a drop of water between here and there. Where's it at? Noah could come back with this. God told me. Amen. Amen. It's going to rain. That's enough. That's settled. God said it was going to happen, so that's just what's going to happen. All right. I must hurry. Other brethren waiting. No, no. He said, it's going to rain. How do you know? It's the word of the Lord. It's thus saith the Lord. What are you going to do about it, Noah? Just walk around and preach about it? No, sir. I'm going to make ready for it. See? Oh, that would be a miracle. The days of miracles is past. Just hold on. You'll see it after a while. Yes, sir. What did he do? He built the ark before the rain fell. Amen. What was he doing? Amen. Acting on the promise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I feel kind of Pentecostal right now. Amen. Feel religious. <laughs> yes. Take God at His word. Act upon the promise regardless of what takes place. It's up to God to do the rest of it. You start knocking the clouds. Lay aside every weight that's so easily beset you. Lay aside all your doubts, your fears, your denominations, your creeds, and anything is contrary to the word. Jesus Christ is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Just lay your creeds aside. Lay your denominations aside. Lay all your doubts aside. All your frustrations aside. And just keep on. First thing you know, you'll, you'll move the last chunk. And he'll be standing there. You'll meet him. Noah said, when I get the ark built, he'll come. The rain will start falling. The day that you get the ark built, if it waits 50 years, I'll be sitting in the ark waiting for it. Amen. It's coming because God said so. Amen. See the first thing? He had to prepare himself. He knew that God was a God of miracles, so he couldn't doubt him. God has spoke to him and he knowed it. When God speaks to you out of His Word, in your heart, you know it. Amen. When all the world's gone from you and the things of the world is dead, you know it. Amen. When if you love the world or the things of the world, you still know in your heart you're not right. Amen. It's true. So when everything's gone, then there's nothing else to do but meet God. He'll be standing there. Amen. He remains as the Son. S-U-N, so does the S-O-N remain. Amen. Just the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's S-U-N that shines is the same sun that shined in Genesis. Amen. The same sun that shined on Elijah on that mountain. The same sun that went down on the day of the crucifixion. Hallelujah. Amen. It remains the same. Amen. And the same Son of God Amen. is the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Amen. The same in power. Amen. The same in love. The same in signs. What is the day a sign of a Christian? Oh, he goes to church. Puts his name on a book. He has a letter. That's not the sign Jesus said. He said, these signs shall follow them in believe. My name, they shall cast out devils. Speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, they'll not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. If God be with us, where is His sign? All right. Get back to His Word. Signs will take care of itself as soon as we get back to the Word. Noah, before he saw the miracles of God, like Gideon wanted a question about, he had to first act upon the Word of God. Amen. Gideon had to act upon the Word of God. Everybody else has to act upon the Word of God. Amen. Before... I could ever say that there was a God. I had to act upon His promise. Then He manifested Himself. If you want healing, believe Him. Act upon His Word. It will come to pass. Moses, before he ever could see God's miracles, he had to first act on God's Word. He knew he had heard his mother say he was born an odd birth. He was hid in the bulrushes. She told him that God had called him and chose him. And he thought, well, me being a fine military man, I can just go out there and slay, slay this Egyptian and hide him in the dust and I can do whatever I want to. That's all it takes. But you see, that's what he was trying to do. That was his idea. He had never seen that God that performed the miracle to keep him through that time. <coughs> but one day after he's 80 years old, he was herding sheep. Going down a pasture, uh, uh, maybe a path where the sheep had been running. And the old herdsman going along there with a crooked stick in his hand, beating alongside the trail, maybe a little lame at 80 years old, whiskers hanging down to his waistline perhaps, gray as a sheep that he was herding. And he saw something. Oh, God. It was mysterious to him. I hope I can show you something tonight. And we got a pool of water here ready. Amen. He saw something he never saw before. Amen. And he said, I better investigate. <laughs> so he turned aside. And the word of the Lord came to him. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord came to him. Well, now before he could go, he had to act upon the word of the Lord. And remember, the Word of the Lord always performs miracles. He said, where will I know that you're with me sent you? He said, what's in your hand? He said, a dry stick. <laughs> Throw it on the ground. The first command God gave Moses. <laughs> if you want to know that I'm God, you got a stick in your hand. Throw it on the ground. 
Gideon said, where is the miracles of God? He said, lay that bread on the altar. Amen. I'll show you who God is. And he touched it with his staff and the smoke went up and he was consumed. Amen. Moses said, who will I say that sent me? How do I know that you're God? He said, what you got in your hand? I'm the creator of life. Amen. I'm the miracle working God. And before Moses could ever see the power of God that performed all the things, first he had to obey God. Amen. He threw the stick on the ground and become a snake. Amen. Oh my. What? His obedience comes first before you see his miracles. Amen. These so-called churches around the countries today say, well, where is all the miracles? We'll give a thousand dollars for anybody that permit, uh, will produce a miracle. You poor, deliberated, backslidden, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. How are you ever going to see a miracle? I tell you, become one. A miracle of God's grace to take an unbelieving doubter and fill him with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, except the man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. If you want to see a miracle, become one. Let God work on you first. He's got some overhauling to do. Some different lenses to put over your eyes. Because you're blind, dead in sin and trespasses, spiritually blind, double dead. Right. God has to give you life. Touch your eyes so you can see. Perform a miracle and make you a miracle and then you can see the miracle working God. That's the first thing. Moses had to believe Him. Moses had to act upon it. Act upon what God's Word said. He wanted to see whether that was God or not. He said, well, Moses, act upon what I tell you. Now listen here tonight, brother, sister. If you want to know who God is, it's to act upon what He says here. Repeat every one of you. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you'll become a miracle. Amen. That's His promise. That's what He said. Act on His Word. Amen. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promises unto you and to your children. Well, that's just for the apostles. And them that's far off and even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Amen. That's for the promises too. Act upon His Word. And you'll see a real miracle. Something will take place when you act upon His Word. Like Gideon did. He did what he told him to do. Like Noah did. He did what he told him to do. Like Moses did. He did what he told him to do. He said, throw down your stick. In other words, get rid of everything around you. Amen. Hey. Hallelujah. Let me have it. <laughs> so I got an awful temper. Give it to God. He knows how to quieten it. God will love lust. He knows how to take it away. Yeah. Just put it in His hands and watch what a miracle can do. That's right. All right. Moses had to work on the Word of God before, or obey the Word of God before he could see God's miracles. But after he once saw it, brother, there's nothing going to stop him then. Amen. I see him the next day with Zephyr sitting on this mule and, and um, a little Gershom on his hip, on her hip, brother. Whiskers hanging down like that. Brother, that face is smiling out of my eyes and dancing up towards the sky from a sheep herder to a mighty man of God, a man of valor going down to the liver. Uh, Look at Gideon, what happened? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, going down with a crooked stick to take over a nation. He did it. Sure he did. God told him to. No matter how un unreal it seems, you just do what God tells you to do. You'll find out that His Word is still the same. Just get the clouds back. The sun's already shining. Joshua, all oh, that great conqueror, all oh, the successor of Moses, a man that God loved, a mighty warrior, a man that God loved. <coughs> God told him, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. But before... The walls fell. Joshua marched according to the chief captain's orders around the wall 13 times. 
before the power of God ever struck the thing. He marched around the wall and sounded the trumpet according to the word of God that the chief captain told him out there when he met him. He marched according to the word of God. What did he do? He acted upon the word before he saw the miracle. You know, just the sound of trumpet don't shake down a wall that you can run chariot races around. Sounding a trumpet, but God said, just, just march around the walls seven times, and the last day march seven and thirteen times. And as you go around the wall, at the last time, let the priest go before with the ark and sound the trumpet. And when the trumpet sounds, the walls will shake down. What did they do? He saw the miracle of God after he acted on the Word of God. Where is your miracles? Act on His Word first. How could the walls be shut down and leave one little house standing? A harlot's house. Because she acted on the Word of God. Amen. Why did the rest of them die and she lived? She acted on the Word of God. Amen. And she Amen. saw the miracle of God. Amen. That's the way to find it. Act on the Word. The Hebrew children... At the fiery furnace. What did they do before they saw the miracle of God? They acted on the Word of God. They know He was God. They know He was a God that had brought them up out of Egypt. They they know that He was the same God that always was. That He had to be the miracle working God. And He would give them a commission not to bow to idols. He don't change. Stay with my word. Don't you bow to idols. What did he say? Our God is able to deliver us in this fire furnace. But nevertheless, we're going to act upon his word. There it was. What happened? Then they saw the miracle of God. That God could withstand the fire. If you're sick, act upon his word. See if he heals. If you're a sinner and wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost... Come repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and act upon His Word. Amen. See what happens. If you still got the world in you, you women still wearing short hair, you still wearing makeup, you men still with tempers and fussing about your denominations, if you want to find out if He's still God, act upon it. Lay yourself upon His altar. Amen. See what takes place. He's God. You have to act on His Word first. Daniel, before he saw the miracle of God, could deliver him from the lion's den. The first thing he did was act upon the Word of God. The proclamation went forth. If any man prays to any other God besides this idol for so many days, he'll be thrown in the lion's den. No man could pray to any other God but to the king. He had to be God. For 30 days. What did Daniel do? He acted upon the Word of God. Because when Solomon dedicated the temple, he prayed. He said, Lord, if thy people be in trouble anywhere and will look to this holy temple, then you hear from heaven. That's right. Daniel acted first. The threat was you're going into the lion's den. But Daniel acted on the word of God. He knew that God was still God, just like Gideon did. He knew that God, if he was still God, then where's his miracles? And Daniel knew he was a prophet. He knowed he loved God. He knowed he was his servant. And he knowed God was able to deliver him from them lines. But if he was in trouble, under a threat, he turned his face towards the temple and prayed three times a day. Just exactly. Amen. Acted upon the Word of God and God filled him so full of the Holy Ghost to the lions couldn't eat him. That's right. Right. He acted first upon the Word of God. Jonah, in the belly of the whale, Acted first upon the Word of God. He knew he was gone. As far as physical, his hands was bound, his feet was bound. This preacher to the Gentiles was towed out of the ship into the whale's belly and down to the bottom of the sea. Now, what a condition he's in. But first, he turned himself over in the vomit of the whale. Seaweeds is wrapped around his neck where the, the whale had been eating these weeds and things to put vitamins in his body, his vitamin pills. And then he got a preacher in there. But this preacher came to himself. Hallelujah. Oh, brother preacher, come to yourself tonight. 
get away from old creeds and things and come back to a living God, to a living Word. He came to himself. He rolled over. You can't hide a saint from his prayer. He turned over and he looked everywhere was whale's belly all around him. East, north, west, and south. And he realized that he was in the whale's belly and down the bottom of the sea in a storm on the sea. All hopes is gone when he was in the ship and now he's in the whale's belly. Farther away from hope than ever. And when only he could see the belly of the whale, he said, there are lying vanities. I won't believe them anymore, but I'll look towards your holy temple. Amen. Amen. The holy temple wasn't looking down. He said, it's up there. So I'm looking towards it. And then he seen God's miracle. Somehow, oxygen came into the whale. He just breathed on him. For three days and took a nice little rest and ride so he could take this 40 days journey across the, uh, uh, the wicked city down there to preach the gospel. He got all freshened up with some new oxygen out of heaven. It couldn't come out of the whale and it couldn't come out of the sea, so it had to come from God. Oh, breathe on us tonight, Lord. That oxygen. All the Word of God and the power of His resurrection. That we can stay alive in this last wicked day. Breathe upon us, O Holy That's it, brother. Breathe, Lord. Fill us with an oxygen. Like I told you this morning about the duck. As soon as he smelt the water, there was nothing to keep him away from it. All the cluckings of the hen and everything else, he went straight to water because he was a duck. Now, if there's any of you got duck nature, we got a great big pool back here. <laughs> if you can smell, if you've got a whiff that God remains God, if you've got a whiff from heaven tonight that God keeps His Word and He's a miracle-working God, and you haven't right. received the Holy Ghost yet, Hallelujah. smell the water. Yeah. That's the first thing he said to him. Certainly. Lord. Repent from the bottom of your heart and lay yourself as a Amen. sacrifice on the altar and you'll be consumed of the world and born again of the Spirit and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Go through the right process. Now come shake hands with the preacher and put your name on the book. But die! Amen. So dead! That you don't know the world no more. Abel died on the same altar with his lamb. And the only way you're ever going to get right with God is die on the altar with Christ. Until everything becomes blackened around you. Die there and when you raise again, you'll be a new creature in Christ. Sure, Jonah had to believe God's word and act on it first. Now he's probably laying with his face down when he went in the whale's belly because he just pitched him over. He just scooted right down the whale's belly. The whale said, well, we'll go down to the bottom of the sea now. now I wonder what that whale thought in those three days. Funny thing was going on. Man. Now, you see, the building of the whale didn't appreciate it. <laughs> Neither does a church denomination or organization appreciate it. But oh, how Jonah loved it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Sure, he loved it because it was fresh air that God was fanning on him. And he was staying alive. God fanned the fresh air on us. Amen. If Jonah could perform a miracle like that by believing the Word of God to a natural temple where a man that finally backslid, Solomon, had built but asked God in prayer to bless every who looked to that temple and deliver them out of their troubles... Wherever it was, and Jonah could believe under those conditions, how much more can we believe tonight to look to heaven? Amen. We're not a backslider, not a man that died and stayed in the grave like Jonah, uh, like Solomon was then, but a living God who sat at the right hand of the majesty. Amen. Amen. Oh, power and authority in preaching the word and sent it forth the Holy Ghost as a witness of it. Amen. Believe the Word of God, you'll see the miracles of God. But you have to believe it first. Certainly one. Yeah. Gideon, after he had seen this visitor <laughs> sitting under the tree, and Gideon kind of questioned him at first. He said, if God still remains God, if God be with us, where's His miracles? And this, and this visitor sitting under the tree, what did he do? When he touched that sacrifice with his stick that he had in his hand, it was consumed. And he knew that was the action of God. So he knew then 
that the visitor under the tree that looked like an old man sitting there was the Word made flesh. Amen. It was a living Word. Amen. He knew that that was a living Word because it's acting and living in present tense. Amen. Glory to God, brother. Pentecostal's fine. But it's a painted fire if you haven't received it yourself. Amen. Not a past tense, a present tense. Amen. What good is a God of history if He isn't the same God today? Amen. I've often said, what good does it do to give you canary bird vitamins to make his wings grow and put him in a cage and keep him there? <laughs> What's the use of teaching that there is a God of power and then denying the people of the privilege of serving you? Amen. Amen. Certainly. Nonsense. Why you got all these seminaries around? Like a big incubator. Hatching out preachers. Hey. Hallelujah. Always felt sorry for an incubator chicken. He really didn't have any mammy. He never knowed where he come from. Nobody to mother him. He come out mechanically. That's about the way with a seminary preacher that only knows theology. He might be as smart and polished as any scholar could be. He might be able to preach in many different languages. But if he don't know who his parent is... I said not long ago, if anything is an ignorant thing, is a mule. He don't know whose papa or mama is. He's a hybrid thing. See, he don't know who, what papa or mama, he don't know where he belongs. That's like some of these hybrid Christians. So-called, bred in by denominations. But a good thoroughbred horse is pedigree. Amen. 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 He knows what it's all about. And a good third-bed Christian knows where the storehouse of God is. Yeah. They know that they're born of the Word. Yeah. The Word is made flesh in them. Yeah. Every word that God says, they don't differ with it. They say it's right. Yeah. Amen and amen. They punctuate it with an amen every time. Yeah. Amen. 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 Something in them punctuates it himself. Yeah. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. Amen. He that believeth in me the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. 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 Go ahead and say, cluck, cluck, cluck. The days of miracles are fast, but honk, honk, honk. I smell the water. Hallelujah. Why are you putting God to the test? That's it. God first. Amen. Act upon His Word and see if it's right. It's true. John the Baptist was following right along his line of duty. When he's just a, a boy, we don't have much record. His father was a fine man, but disbelieved God. God was going to determine to bring it to Elizabeth, this baby, so he told her, told him he, she would conceive this child, and he doubted it. He struck him dumb. I imagine the heart of John the Baptist's parents, Elizabeth and Zacharias, was kind of grieved because they know they were old. This promised child that had been born, that God had performed a miracle and had brought this child into the world when they were old and past age. They know that their hearts were grieved because they couldn't live long enough to see him perform his great work of God. But they dedicated him to it. Somewhere beyond the stars and moon, they could look down and see it. They'd never see this little boy. They, di they died when he was just a child. Yet. A young fella, a boy. He left his home and went into the wilderness. There he was brought up under the power of God. God told him, You're the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm sending you forth. Go and cry! How John must have waited each day as you run the snakes and the rocks. And <laughs> kicking the stone. Oh, I can't wait! <laughs> What are you waiting on, John? Just, I want to hear his commission. That's all. Get out of the way, snakes. The tape for the rocks. That's the reason them Pharisees come out. He said, oh, you generation of vipers. Tape for the rocks. I say the same thing, not you generation of vipers. Tape for the water. You know what I'm talking about. These tapes... This is tape. This will go all over the world. <laughs> tape for the water if you want to see God's miracles. John following right along. A fine looking fellow come up. He said, maybe that's him. 
He looked. No, it's not him. No. God gave me a promise. John, you say the Messiah is alive today? Yes. Where is he at? Here on earth somewhere. I don't know where he is, but I'll know him when he comes. How do you know? God told me what to look for. Amen. How do you know you're going to get healed when you're prayed for? God told me what to look for. Amen. How do you know you're going to receive the Holy Ghost? I follow His Word. He told me what to look for. Amen. I know what's coming next. Hallelujah. You know what's coming next? If you'll obey God's Word, His promise comes next. Amen. He can't lie. He's gone. Amen. What's next? John said, I'll see him when he comes. They said, oh, look at this fellow coming here. That, he's got a crown on. He said, that must be the Messiah driving those horses. So said, that's not him. Walked right up to him and said, now, Lord, where do you have your brother's wife? <laughs> I know there's something wrong there. <laughs> Walked up to him and told him that's Herod, you see. And oh, he made his wife so mad she hated him the longest she lived. John kept looking. He said, oh, I know him when he comes. How do you know? God told me I'd see a sign. Amen. And it'd be a Messiah sign. Amen. I know the Messiah because the Messiah sign will be there. Amen. Amen. God knows His church. He said, these signs shall follow them. Amen. Amen. Not they belong to the Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostals. Amen. But these signs shall follow them that Amen. believe. He knows believers. Yeah. Sometimes you say today, are you a believer? Oh, I'm Methodist. Well, that shows you're not a believer then. <laughs> On Pentecostal, that still shows you're not a believer. Amen. When you're a believer, you believe God. Amen. Everybody knows it. You're a seal by the kingdom of God and a seal's on both sides of the page. Both coming and going. <laughs> you can tell him. All right, he said, I know him when he comes because there will be a sign. I'll see the Messiah sign. And one day he looked. Oh, brother. Why? He was looking for it. Amen. That's how he recognized it. I hope that sinks in. Amen. Are you looking for it? Are you watching for something to take place? They know the Scriptures. Now all them priests standing around there was five times smarter than John. We don't have record where he went to school one day. But there stood priests that their great, 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 great grandfathers were priests. There stood man there that knowed every inch of that scroll. All the prophets and Genesis and all about it. But you see, John was looking for a sign. A Messiah. He knowed if that was God, there'd be something supernatural about it. That's right. So is it today. If you're a Christian, there's something supernatural struck you. If it didn't strike, you're deceived. If you still live the same life you once lived, Still love the same things you still loved at the first. You still love them. You're deceived. That's right. Not a son or daughter of God. And then we find out. John was standing there one day. And they say, uh, reading in the, uh, a little story of him, said that John was on one side of the river. He done backed him up on the other side. That's the way they do a servant of God. Back him out of every denomination, every organization. Every <laughs> he didn't have a pulpit to stand in, but he was in mud up to his knees. He didn't have a tuxedo suit on, his collar turned around either. No, sir. He had a piece of sheepskin draped around him, probably uh, looked like a wild man. Standing out there. And that priest said, Do you mean to tell me that there will come a time when this great temple, our great organization will fall? He said, Sure it will. Amen. How do you know it? How do you read the Scripture? There's coming a Messiah, and that Messiah will take away the daily sacrifice. Daniel said so. Amen. The prophet said so. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I feel more religious all the time. i got to stop. Amen. How do you know it? The prophet said so. Amen. That's how Micah knew that he couldn't bless Ahab. Elijah done cursed him. Uh, <laughs> Amen. That's all. He had to stay with the Word. You want to see the works of God? You have to follow the Word of God. He knew it couldn't happen. So what happened then? He wanted to see the works of God. John said, I'll know him when he comes. One day he stand there and said, Yes, there will come a time that the daily sacrifice will be taken away. The Messiah will be the daily sacrifice. And the abomination make a desolation shall set in. Rabbi, where do you get that? That's contrary to our creed. But it's not contrary to God's Word. Amen. 
There's a prophet because the word of the Lord was with that prophet. That's right. I ain't said that. <laughs> Behold! Amen. There stands the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. An ordinary little stoop-shouldered fellow standing there. Come walking down towards the river, walking along with Lazarus. Just an ordinary man, dressed like ordinary man. No priest, no turban, no crown, no nothing. Just a poor boy, a carpenter. Come walking down with his hands full of splinters, maybe. I'm walking out. Do you mean to tell me what? Can't you see him? There, behold, means look up to esteem. There's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Some of them said, well, you know who that is? That's that carpenter. <laughs> now we know that God's not no prophet, but he was. <laughs> he was. He know why? He don't know what he's talking about. Yes, he did. How can he tell him any different than any other man? The Messiah be different. How will we know it? John saw something. They didn't. <laughs> Depends on what you're looking at. <laughs> what do you see tonight? You see a great popular man, a great denomination, and everything falling into your laps? Or do you take the way with the Lord's despised few? Do you see the Bible? Do you see God's Word? If you're born again, you'll see it. I'll tell you are, you can't see it. Here he comes. He said, He that told me in the wilderness. Oh, brother. He that told me to cry. I've been crying here for six months. Come up in the evening and everywhere here, up and down this Jordan, wading this mud, fuss with you preachers. preachers. Kicking your denominations around. Stepping on your sore toes. But the thing is here, I see it. How do you know? The same one told me to be a voice crying in the wilderness. God had raised me up for that purpose. Said, Upon whom I shall see the Spirit. Amen. John knew him. What did he do? He preached the word first, obeyed the word, and he saw the sign of God. Amen. And remember, it's not recorded that any other person standing there saw it. John saw it alone. Hallelujah. Depends on what you're looking for. Why? John was obeying the word. Priest and them wasn't obeying the word. John was obeying the word, his commission. And he saw it. We'll hurry quickly. Got to. Martha, at the grave, she had met the word of God. Amen. She believed it. Before she could see the miracle of God, she had to believe the word of God and act upon it. She said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother not die. He said, uh, Martha, I am the resurrection life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe us thou this? She said, Yea, Lord. There you are acting. I believe. What do you believe, Martha? That thou art the Christ that was to come into the world. So where are you buried? Got out of the grave and there I was standing there. They won't see she really believes that I'm the Word. So take away the stone. She went to acting on the Word. Amen. She had to! To see death turn to life. Amen. And the only way you'll ever be able to see death turn to life is take His Word and act upon it. Amen. If you're a sinner, take His Word and act upon it. Then you'll see the miracle of God. You become a miracle of God. If you're sick, take the Word of God. Doctor says you're going to die. Take the Word of God and act up on it. That'll bring new life. Oh, my. Sorry to keep you so long. Just a couple more. Then I'll quit. See? Just a couple more. Honest, I will. I'm sorry to take my brother's time. See? This leaves in two hours. From him. The woman at the well, she was a sinner. She had five husbands. She'd come out one day to get some water. She started to draw the water and she heard a man say, Woman! Bring me a drink! She looked around and she said, It's not customary for Jews to speak to Samaritans. I'm a woman of Samaria. And it's not customary. Why would you speak to me? He said, But if you know who you're talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Yeah. Why? She said, The well's deep and you have nothing to draw with. I said, how, how, how are you going to get a drink? And he said, the water that I give will be a fountain of water, a gusher, bubbling up in the soul. 
She said, now, wait a minute. You're a Jew. You worship at Jerusalem and our fathers worship at this mountain and so forth. He said, believe me, the hour is coming and now is when you neither worship at Jerusalem or in this mountain. But God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in the spirit. No doubt the little woman said, now, wait a minute. Who is this fellow anyhow? He wanted to know who he was because she had to introduce him to the Samaritans. Who is he? She said, um, he talked to her a few minutes. He said, woman, go get your husband and come here. They said, now he's acting smart. She said, I don't have any husband. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Then the stick went on the sacrifice. (laughs) Something happened. What happened? She's seen the miracle of God. Amen. Said you've said the truth. Because you've had five, and the one you're living with now is not your husband, so you told the truth. She turned. She knew that God to the people had been dead for years. They're priests and rabbis and so forth. They talked about a God, but was promised in the Bible that there was coming one. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. See, we know that the Messiah cometh. Now, let me be sure of this. We know that Messiah cometh. I'll ask him this. Now, I'll see what his word is. A man can't tell me that that don't know God. Amen. We know that Messiah cometh, who is called the Christ. And when he comes, this is the thing that he'll do. Amen. When he comes, we're looking for him. He said, I'm he. Amen. That was enough. <laughs> yeah, that was enough. She run into the city. She said, come see a man that told me the things that I've done. Amen. Amen. Before she could bring that message, she had to first see the miracle of God. Amen. Before she could see the miracle of God, she had to take God at His word. Amen. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh my, how we could go on. Let's get another one. Pentecost. After they had walked with the word, after they had seen the word, after they had believed the Word. But before they could see the miracle of Pentecost, they had to obey the Word. Amen. Amen. Go up to the city of Jerusalem, said the Word, and wait there until you're endued with power from on high. Now, what if eight days passed? Matthew looked over to Mark and said, You know what? I had a little funny feeling the other day. That must have been the Holy Ghost. He told us to wait up here. See, That must have been it. Oh, let's wait another day. The ninth day comes on. Well, now, he told us to go up here nine days ago. Surely, don't you believe we received it? I believe we got it when we believed him. Don't you think so? Oh, you good Baptist. <laughs> so I, believe, I believe we got it because he told us to come up here. And I, you know what I believe? I believe as soon as we got up here, we obeyed what he said. But what did he say? He didn't say when you get up there, you'll get it. He didn't say wait five days or nine days. He said until... Yeah. Amen. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. What do you do? Take His Word. Act on it and stay right with it. Each day, stand toe to toe with Satan. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. Hallelujah. It's written. It's, written. it's got to come to pass. Amen. You're acting upon the Word. See? Then you'll see the miracle of God. That's right. But first you have to act on it. They went up there and they obeyed the Word. They stayed there. The ninth day come, I can hear Peter say, You know what? What do you, brethren, think? Mark might have raised up and said, You know what, brethren? Let's just accept it by faith because we're obeying. No, you're not fully obeying. You said, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That ain't fully obeying. <laughs> you say, I joined the church. That's not obeying. See? I repeat the Apostles' Creed. That still isn't obeying. Oh, brother, I quit my lying and stealing. I don't do anything mean. That still ain't obeying. It's got to be a birth. It's got to be something happening. You've got to die and something be born in you. Oh, after so many days they waited, nine days passed. They said, let's just accept it and go on with our ministry. The world is a-dying out there. Why should we wait any longer? I can hear Peter say, but you know something tells me that it ain't right yet. That ain't just exactly obeying the Word. See, if we expect to see the miracle that God promised us of sending the promise of the Father upon us, We've got to wait here until something happens. Because the Scripture said that it would come in this form. Joel said, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Oh, praise the Lord. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. 
If all my hands made the maid servant, I pour out of my spirit. I'll show signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Isaiah the prophet said, And with stammered lips and other tongues will I speak to this people, and this is the Sabbath day that they should enter in. For all this they would not hear it. Now, brethren, we couldn't walk out here like that without any seeing any experience at all. See? We've got to have something because you said, Wait here until you're endued with power. Now, I haven't got any more power did when I come in here. I've been here all night. I've been here the next night. I've been here nine nights. I'm just the same as I was when I come in here and he told us we would receive power. So let's just keep on waiting. And all of a sudden, when they fully obeyed the Word of God, then they saw the miracle of Pentecost. They saw fire fall in the building. That pillar of fire come down in amongst the people and big licks like cloven tongues set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Something happened. When? When, when they made the decision to, uh, if they'd already received it, no, when they fully obeyed the Word of God. They saw the miracle of Pentecost. So is it today. you got to do the same thing. Now, friends, I really will close on this one. I ain't going to turn another page. All right. Next man, get ready. I'm going to say this. Now, although called everything that can be called bad, holy roller, Pentecostal, church breaker, <laughs> hypocrite, Beelzebub, <laughs> dreamer, <laughs> everything that can be called, we're called. But what do we do? Call you what? Dreamer, Beelzebub, false prophet. Jesus only. <laughs> everything else that can be called, everything bad that can be called, but by believing the true Word of God, His true prophet of the Word, what do we do? We see the things that we see. <laughs> oh, they'll come from the east and west. <laughs> they'll come from the lands afar. To feast with our King, to dine as His guest. How blessed these pilgrims are, beholding His hallowed face, aglow with love divine. Blessed partakers of His grace, as great gems in His crown to shine. Jesus is coming soon, our trials will then be o'er. Oh, what if our Lord this moment should come? For those who are free from sin, oh, then would it bring you joy, our sorrow and deep despair. When our Lord in glory comes, we'll meet Him up in the air. Amen. Wow! We're acting upon His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Call anything you want to. We see the sign of the Messiah Amen. in our midst. We see a pillar of fire. Can't deny it. Call us anything they want to. God's here. Hallelujah. Science has took the picture of it. Why? Obeying His Word. It's never been done in history. But yet the mechanical eye of the camera says it's Him. There's a light struck the lens. Why? Taking God's Word first. Let the denominations kick you out if you want to. Let them all turn their back on you if you want to. But act upon the Word of God if you want to see the miracles of God. Hallelujah. Jesus promised, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. That angel came down. God manifested in a human body, turned his back to the tent, and said to, not knowing who Abraham was, pretendingly, Said Abraham, not Abram. He just changed his name a couple of days before that. Where is thy wife Sarah? Not S A R I S A R A H. Where is thy wife Sarah? Called him by his fatherly name and her by her prince's name. Oh, who was it? Abraham knows right then who that was. He said, She's in a tent behind you. He said, I'll go to visit you, Abraham. I. 
I'm going to visit you according to my promise that I gave you because you've waited now all these years. Twenty-five years you've waited for it. You stayed right with the Word. Acting upon the Word. You denied that you even belong on the earth. You become a pilgrim and a stranger. You're seeking a city to come whose builder and maker of God. I promised you that through this child that would be brought forth that he'd be, you'd be a father of many nations. I promised that you've acted on the Word. Now you're going to see the miracle of God. <laughs> How will I sit, my Lord? Where is Sarah, thy wife? <laughs> In the tent behind you. said, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. And Sarah laughed within herself. said, How can me, an old woman, and my Lord old too, ever have pleasure again? He said, Why did Sarah laugh? All right. He acted upon the Word of God. Amen. He was seeing the miracle of God. Amen. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. See? Act upon the Word of God, and you'll see the miracle of God. Amen. What was it? When we stood here not long ago preaching the church ages, we brought them down, that little sign that's over there. Draw them here on the board. And right in this audience before more people are sitting in here now, just as soon as I got through speaking, Light glowed down and went back under and hung on that wall. And a shadow came over it while everybody looking at it and yeah. measured off those church ages just exactly the way they're there. Amen. How many sure now that was here that day? Amen. Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Looking at it with your own eyes. What was it? First, believing the Word of God. Amen. Preaching the Word of God. Receiving the Word of God. And we saw the miracle of that. Amen. Confirming the word that it was right. Amen. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. All together. Our trials will then be o'er. Oh, what if our Lord this moment should come for those who are free from sin? Oh, then would it bring you joy? Our sorrow and deep despair when our Lord in glory comes we'll meet him up in the air Amen why? we're believing on his word keeping the oil in the lamp it trimmed and burning letting your light so shine that other men could see your good works your fruits glorify the Father which is in heaven and what'll happen? Believing the Word of God and acting upon the Word of God, we'll meet Him up in the air. Not a shadow of doubt. God bless you. I'm going to quit. About one third through. I'll finish it some other time, the Lord. But if God is with us, where is His miracle? Do you believe it? Oh, God, let us see a, a coming year. Let us see a coming year till our hearts will not be satisfied with a church denomination or a creed, with a handshake or so-called religion. Let us not be satisfied till we feel the miracle work and power in God taking the, in our own hearts, taking the world out and forming Christ. Now, not tonight and tomorrow start doing something else, but grow in Him up to His statue. Amen. We grow up to Him. Until we meet him. Let's bow our heads. Room, room. Yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for thee. A room, room. Yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for me. Our Heavenly Father, with humbleness of soul and spirit, hoarse in my voice and these few cut up or broke up words, Lord, I pray that you'll take them and patch them together, not knowing how to do it, but just saying what come in my mind. Place it down in the heart of every person and let them see and believe it with the attitude that it was presented. And Father, 
It'll make reasonings for them. It'll bring Christ to them. Bless us tonight, Father. We wait acting up on the Word of God. Bless these brothers, Lord. Forgive me, Father, for taking some of their time. I pray that you'll anoint them with the Holy Ghost in such a way that the power of God will fall through the building here and sinners may come to the altar and, and weep their way to Calvary and it sick will be healed and great signs and wonders will be done and we'll see the miracle working power of the living God. We wait for that, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. You love Him? If God be with us, let's see His Son. Where is the sign of the Messiah? That's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If that Messiah is the same, he'll have the same sign. Yes, amen. Where is he at? What organization does he belong to? What organization can we go join up with and find the Messiah, his sign? What house can we enter to find him? Think of it. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Behold, I speak to thee, my people, this night as I have brought forth this my prophet. Yea, as he has stood in the midst of thee to exhort thee, yea, that thou should turn to me the true and living God. For I say unto thee that I do now manifest my spirit in the midst of thee. For I say unto thee, my dearly beloved children, this night, as thou shalt in this coming year, as thou shalt be moved closer unto me, I say thou shalt see my hand outstretched, Thou shalt see many of my people brought closer unto me. Yea, thou shalt be brought into the unity of my faith. And thou shalt see of my hand outstretched. For I say that I shall rise up in a great and mighty way. Thou shalt see these signs and wonders that I have longed to display in the midst of thee. And thy sick body shall be made whole. For I say unto thee that I, the true and living God, shall pour out mercy unto thee. I say that I shall cleanse thee from all thy sins. I say unto thee this night, my prophet, thou shalt prepare, yea, thou shalt go once again, and I say that as thou goest forth, my hand shall be outstretched in a greater way, and thou shalt see things confirmed in thy ministry thou hast not heretofore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless thy name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.